Bonsoir, good afternoon. We are, I think, very privileged to have with us Eva Bartlett, who is a courageous and independent journalist who, has, who is bringing us a message from the people of Syria. Il y a ce qu'on appellerait une vérité interdite, à savoir que l'alliance militaire occidentale, notamment les États-Unis et l'OTAN, soutiennent des entités terroristes, pas seulement en Syrie, mais dans plusieurs pays, et que cette guerre n'est pas issu d'un mouvement de protestation, mais il est issu d'une intervention militaire illégale, une guerre d'agression, où les terroristes ont été utilisés par les instances militaires et du renseignement occidental. Et nous avons les preuves là-dessus. Et ce n'est pas pour rien qu'au comité du Sénat des affaires étrangères des États-Unis et au comité des services armés que cette question est maintenant à l'ordre du jour. Et ce ne sont plus les médias indépendants. Les médias indépendants l'ont révélé dès, dès le début, mais c'est également les instances législative américaine. Media disinformation is complicit in this war. This is an illegal and criminal undertaking, and the media is complicit, at least the US media is complicit, in that it is portraying this war as a humanitarian undertaking whereby the Western military alliance and the so-called international community are waging a war on terrorism, a counter-terrorist counter initiative. Now, I'd like, in the course of a few minutes, to disclaim this basic proposition. Uh, our main speaker is Eva Bartlett. I will try to be as brief as possible, but there are a number of fundamental questions which have to be addressed. And I'll start with Dara. Now, those who are, actually I was in Syria, I left Syria on March 1st. 2011, after two months' stay. But those who are familiar with Dara will know that Dara is to Syria what Plattsburgh, New York, is to the United States. You don't organize a national movement against the government in Plattsburgh, New York. You organize it in Washington, D.C., or, in, or, in, or, in, or you know, in Chicago, or New York. What happened in Dara is very important because it dispels the understanding that this was a protest movement. It wasn't a protest movement. Why? And this is based on press reports from Israeli, Lebanese, and other sources to the fact that police casualties were higher than those of so-called demonstrators and that there was an exchange of gunfire and acts of terrorism committed on March 17, 18, 2011. Those, I think, have to go on record because a lot of people misunderstand and they said, well, it was a protest movement and then it evolved uh, towards armed conflict. No, it was an insurgency from abroad from day one. And the reports prove it. The second element is that 
The second element is that the recruitment and training of the terrorists started right from the beginning. Or, in fact, before. Okay? Before. The outset was in March 2011. They had already their training program and so on. And there were various training and recruitment pro uh, programs. I think now we have a lot more evidence than we did at the outset. Of course, Saudi Arabia was involved, Qatar was involved, Turkey was involved. Mais je pense que ce qui est important, c'est que l'OTAN et le commandement turc avaient déjà, dès le début, coordonné le recrutement et l'entraînement des, des Moujéhadines et s'étaient modelés sur l'Afghanistan. Et on sait très bien que la CIA avait recruté Al-Qaïda. Al-Qaïda est une création de la CIA. Elle demeure une création de la CIA. Alors, ceux qui veulent vraiment comprendre la Syrie doivent nécessairement avoir une vision historique de ce qui s'est passé. Et personne nie la relation entre la CIA et Al-Qaïda. Et qu'est-ce qui s'est passé? On a commencé à recruter. On a fait le même projet qu'on avait en Afghanistan en, en, en 79, confirmé par les, par, les, euh, par les déclarations de Brzezinski, vous en souviendrez. Alors là, on a, on a le deuxième élément, le recrutement des terroristes. Je passe... Je passe au troisième élément qui me semble absolument fondamental dans la compréhension de ce qui s'est passé. Bon, il y a beaucoup de complexité. In 2014, in the month of June, ISIS is created and then moves across the desert from Syria to Iraq in Toyota pickup trucks. I think most of us are familiar with this, this historic image. But I think we have to understand and analyze that image. Why? Anybody who has a minimal understanding of military affairs will know that a convoy of this nature without air defense can be liquidated virtually in less than an hour, okay, with advanced weapon systems. Are there any specialists here, any pilots who can confirm that? Est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un dans la salle qui est pilote ou spécialiste en affaires militaires? Combien de temps ça prendrait pour liquider ces convois? Les Toyotas sont d'excellents véhicules, mais ce n'est pas ça l'enjeu. Okay? <laughs> A matter of ours. Okay? Ça n'a pas été fait. Non. Pourquoi? Parce que l'ISIS était protégé par l'alliance militaire occidentale. Le passage, euh, le passage ou l'invasion de l'ISIS qui se dirigeait vers Mossoul était programmé, était prévu. Et qu'est-ce qui s'est passé? La campagne contre le terrorisme menée par le président Obama est restée complètement muet à ce sujet. Et c'est seulement deux mois plus tard, début septembre. Alors, vo voici le désert. Je connais ce désert. C'est territoire ouvert, 200 km. Impossible que ces convois auraient pu aboutir si la force aérienne des États-Unis aurait tiré dessus. Ils ne l'ont pas fait, soit qu'ils sont incompétents ou complices. Eh bien, passons à septembre 2014. Septembre 2014, c'est là où, notez bien si Obama avait commencé sa campagne de bombardement en mai 2014, sans doute que ce convoi aurait pu être visé. Mais il l'a commencé deux, deux mois plus tard, et en 2014, on commence la campagne contre le terrorisme, contre l'ISIS, 
en Irak et en Syrie. Et on le fait sous l'emblème d'une opération humanitaire. Euh, et euh, on, on le fait avec l'équipement le plus avancé. Et ce n'est pas par hasard que c'est le Raptor F-22 qui est lancé avec cette opération. Mais la question qu'il faut se poser, quelles sont les cibles What are the targets of this military counterterrorism operation? There's absolutely no evidence that the operation was directed against the Islamic State. In fact, the Islamic State would most probably have been liquidated had they followed their mandate. Uh, I'm giving you some details as to the number. We're not talking about small-scale operation. We're talking about more than 100 uh, sorties over a two-year period, okay? Uh, over 100 sorties over a two-year period. Uh, in fact, um, it's 111,000 sorties, okay, over a two-year period most of which were reconnaissance and supplying uh, the, the terrorists with arms and supplies, etc. More than 8,300 strike sorties directed against Syria. The media doesn't necessarily consider this as a crime against humanity. They, they call it collateral damage. They don't address it. They don't even give the figures. And I'm giving you the figures here. Here are the figures. Voici les données. 31,900 targets. Most of them civilian. Schools, hospitals, residential areas. 40 countries involved. And then the question we have to ask ourselves, who is the aggression, aggressor nation? It's the United States and a coalition of complicit countries. That's what I call Obama's counterterrorism campaign. It's the airstrikes. And uh, uh, in other words, they're using the pretext of the global war on terrorism to destroy a country. Ils utilisent le prétexte de la guerre au terrorisme pour détruire un pays et également pour appuyer les terroristes qui sont présentés comme étant l'opposition modérée, les rebelles modérés, the moderate opposition. There is no moderate opposition in, in Syria. There never was any moderate opposition. There is an opposition which, within the country which is involved in civil society, but there's no opposition in the field of, of, of actual um, militia and so on. Right. 31,900 targets damaged or destroyed by U.S. and coalition air raids. The cost of this operation, the cost of this operation All these are official figures, so you may dispute my interpretation, but I think you have to make up your own mind who is behind the killings. $9.3 billion, something of the order of uh, $12.3 million a day at the expense of U.S. taxpayers and, that, and killing. And, of course, nobody was killed at all at these bombardments. Okay, 100 and, uh, about 140 strike sorties a day. Um, and uh, of course, this did destroy and disrupt the country. It did trigger refugee crisis. We have to acknowledge that. And we also have to acknowledge that the United States, and this is something, this is something which, uh, the media has not really discussed is that the United States 
has delivered weapons to the terrorists through various means. Uh, there's only one, uh, this is only one example of using the secondary weapons market to um, deliver weapons to the, to the terrorists. And uh, it's based on, a, a, on Jane's Defense Weekly, which is a very authoritative military source. And it says that in the course of one month, au courant d'un mois, plus de 990 tonnes d'armement ont été livrées euh, aux rebelles en Syrie par les États-Unis. Il y a d'autres fournisseurs, il y a les, évidemment, il y a l'Arabie Saoudite, il y a le Qatar, il y a la Turquie, etc. Et voici, euh, donc, voici la citation de, de James uh, Defense Weekly qui confirme ce que, ce que je viens de dire. Euh, le dernier élément euh, que Yves Engler va traiter en plus grand détail, c'est les armes que notre gouvernement a vendues à l'Arabie saoudite sachant fort bien que l'Arabie saoudite appuie les terroristes. Our government in Ottawa has allowed for the export of weapons to Saudi Arabia, knowing that Saudi Arabia is a state sponsor of both Islamic State and, as well as the various Al-Qaeda-affiliated entities operating inside Syria. And the last element has to do, and I won't get into details, it has to do with the liberation of Aleppo, which has been occupied for four years by terrorists, Al-Qaeda affiliated terrorists, known and documented, and the media has come to the rescue, well both the international community as well as the media have come to the rescue of these terrorists who are, in effect, uh, considered as the victims of the liberation movement of, of Aleppo. And uh, again, it's perhaps the biggest lie is that in all the reports that we read, they don't mention, they don't identify the names of these occupation forces, which are the various jihadist, so-called jihadist uh, entities which are affiliated to, to, uh, to Al-Qaeda to Al and which are, in fact, primarily responsible for the various acts uh, of atrocity uh, occurring in, uh, in, this, in this conflict. Thank you very much.